we've just arrived. We've arrived at Loch Erebol. Loch Erebol the Terrible, Don Tum. Uh, colder or warmer than you remember? Much, much warmer. <laughs> what? Must have been a Baltic last time. <laughs> uh, it's so cold now. Have you enjoyed your trek? What's that? Have you enjoyed your trek? Y yes, indeed. It's been a grand day today. Very exciting coming around Cape, uh, Cape Roth, the most remote part of Britain. Not many people there. No, just oh, us. Thanks, I think. Just us. Yep. There you are. You'll be looking forward to your tea. I am looking forward to my tea. That'll do anyway. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Got a stir, Donald. <laughs> Trons, look, there's a tall lot of pile on there, like we bush just on the road there, so it's a good trons to have there. You need a trons if you want to know if you like a dog or not. Here we go, look at that, look at that, look at that. So trons tron is not good at all, not at all at all. And look at that, look at the tug on the anchor there, solid. absolutely it's solid there. Yes. Absolutely it's solid. solid. There's, just, there's no chance of that moving in the night now, per se. What was the first job after having anchored? Have a cup of tea! Have a cup of tea, yeah. Have a cup of tea! That's right. <laughs> well... And down here... Aye. We've got... Or... A kettle. Well, if, if the skipper herself was on board, we have a cup of tea before anchoring. Before anchoring, of course. Always. But since she's not here... <coughs> Yes. Cup of tea after anchoring. Cup of tea right. anchor after anchoring. Yes. Anchor after anchoring. We're anchor after anchoring. <laughs> it's five o'clock Sunday morning, and the first tricker on deck, the first watcher on deck. Second watch is sleeping down below, lee cloths up. Because we're leaving Loch Erebol. Oh, morning, morning. Morning, Sunday morning. <laughs> what a time to get up. Five o'clock, <laughs> on our way. On our way, good and early. That's all and above the call of duty. Not at all. It's exactly the call of duty. <laughs> on our way out of Erebol, bound for Stromness. Why at this unearthly hour? To catch the tide at Stromness, that's why. It's blowing about 20 knots of wind just now, but we're going to be right off the wind, so we should have a very quick and easy passage 
if it's a northwesterly as forecast, and it looks like it is at the moment. We'll have a beam reach, and that'll be fine. Well, it's 10 to 5 in darkest Loch Erebol, and there are two red deer on the spit. Quite unconcerned by the noise of the engine. It's a much nicer morning than yesterday. Yesterday, Sully and I got up, left the watch below in bed, and we thrashed out to the end of the loch. But the conditions were uncomfortable to say the least. We were pitching and thumping, and we came back. We spent the day yesterday here at Ard Clucky in Erebol. <coughs> Donald and I hitchhiked into Durness and we met up with Lucy and Martin. And Anne opened the shop and let us get our stores and Martin ran us back. And we had a great time. And now... Hey hey! <laughs> Solly's, hey. Solly's feeling good. It's full. 4.45? 4.45, I just said and it was 10 to 5. Monday morning? I can't believe it. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah, because it's and a... the sun is almost shining. It's a beautiful morning. Ah, wonderful. And the watch below are setting up the lee cloths. Oh yeah, we're about to go. Here we go. <coughs> well, there's the old Manahoy. There's the old men of Crutman Rosie, and we're nearly there. <laughs> Entering Hoy Mouth, still cracking on at six knots. Had made a great passage. There's another old man of crack one, Rosie. Okay, you speak to us, Mike. So we're just coming in through my mouth. So this is just around the corner. We've got about two knots of tide with us at the moment. Quite keen to see how fast we actually go though. What speed are we doing now? Seven knots now. It's disappointing. I was hoping we might hit nine or ten. We might yet. So I guess it's about two o'clock now, isn't it? Five to two or something like that. Five to two. Five to two. Oh, Monday morning, Monday afternoon. So we've done. You have nothing more to say? <laughs> We're in the half because I switched the camera off. Camera off. Yeah, uh, I see. <laughs> you missed it. That's what mm -hmm. No, yep. we're, we're going to be enjoying an afternoon off in Stormness. It's yeah. two o'clock now, we're maybe half an hour, an hour away. Because we're quite short of afternoons off, aren't we? <laughs> That's the thing. It's always good though, you get to wander around the shops, maybe a wee shower. De kind of definitely a wee shower. <laughs> we, uh, have a wander around, see what's happening. What's the are we doing now? <laughs> <laughs> A mere 8.7. That's quite fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. Yeah.
that's Scapa Flow in there. And Stromness ahead. Good morning, or yes, it's still morning. 11 o'clock on Tuesday the 26th and we're leaving Stromness. Our plan, remember, the island on the toe of Hoy to get out into the Pentland Firth about 1400 hours, catch the last hour of the ebb to take us past this. How are you? Hi. Good to be on our way again, although we've only been here 12 hours or so. Bit more than that, perhaps. Um, yeah, heading south. What a change. Hmm. Down to sunny climb. First time this trip, eh? It is the ferry coming. Dreams in ferry. Must be people going to work. First island, <laughs> and then the flood to take us past the next island, and down by Wick, and down the coast. Hopefully achieving double figures in the tide, and heading for Leipster today. It's another grey day, however the rain has just stopped. And here we go, leaving Stromness. At the same time as the ferry. Ferry's turning on the stop. Not the first time we've been done with the ferry in the Marys. There's Stromness. Well, what wind it is, it's going at our speed. Here we go, out of Stromness, bound for Scapa Flow. Investigate that historical anchorage. The biggest and best natural harbour in the whole of the British Isles. And smooth sailing for us for a change. I don't know what we'll do if we're not backing up and down. No. Well, we'll sit and drink tea. <laughs> of course. Of course we will. There's the house on the hill with chalk built. It's 12.41 and we've had a sharp contrast in our sailing conditions. We're all dozing on deck. Not enough wind to sail by. Motoring along. Cava to port. Farah on the port head and flot out behind that. And we're heading for South Walls and out by Cantrick Head and into the Pentland Firth. No wind, but it's quite pleasant to motoring along. Action! So we've got Swona. Yeah. Oh! Bang! Right in the time between two. And I went duck into the head. 
And there's Duncan's behead. Um, just had some lunch. And very good it was. Cheese out, sandwiches, and a sausage roll, and some coffee. Excellent. This, this is the first day we've had sailing in flat seas, so it's quite nice to, to eat something. Good. We're motoring about four and a half knots. The sail's given us another half knot, and the tide's given us another knot on top of that. Isn't that great? And the old sea dogs are enjoying it fine. And the young sea dog. How is that, Mike? <laughs> um, we did about four and a half knots, but our velocity made good as seven and a half. Wow! Three knots of tide. Wow. Next to the pendant for our races. Excellent. That's Swona and the fast catamaran ferry. Lost her. There she is. And yonder's Duncan's V head. Seven and a half knots. <laughs> That was a May Day just concluded. Northern Explorer, who had lost engine power off the south side of, not the south side, the west side of Swona at a cave with 12 passengers. That's had the lifeboat and a yacht and a helicopter attender. We offered to help too, but we were on the east side of Swona. It would have taken us half an hour to get there. A larger yacht offered to get there in six minutes and took about three quarters of an hour to get there. Enthusiastic for sure. We are now, as you can see, off Duncan's Bay Head. We're picking up a nice tide now. More than two knots again. And we hope to scoot down the east coast. There's Solly on the helm. Just round the corner. We've just rounded, yep. Yeah. We've just been hearing a great commotion in May Day on the west coast of Stroma. Duncan's Bay Head, just there. Duncan's Bay Race, just ahead. Picking up two knots of favourable tide now. What do you say, Mike? Hey, I think it'll be three anyway. Some nice stacks in there. been happening? Um, a boat's reverse gear failed on the west side of the Stroma and it's called Mayday. All the passengers got off onto a rock and I think they lost the boat on the rush. Uh, the third lifeboat and the Shenton helicopter were scrambled to rescue them. Fairly good. Glassy calm, not a breath. About four and a bit knots on the engine, and nearly another two knots with the tide. There's Duncan's behead behind you. And the next one's Noss Head, is it? Around the corner there, Libster Bay, 21 miles away. How's it going, guys? Not a bit of wind. wind. Pretty about the wind. But, uh, you know, that's life, isn't it? That's life. It's the first one day, not enough for next. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Right, sir. No good being too philosophical, everybody. Oh, 
glorious sight. And it's half past eight and we're fast approaching Leipster. We've had to motor sail a lot of the way. But we have got the thing sailing now and then. Anything to report, Donald? I'm thrilled to see the sun long last. <laughs> almost two weeks of darkness. <laughs> well, it's certainly pretty tonight. That's lovely. Solly, what have you got to report? Oh, there we go again. There we go again. The look at that shiny. cool, look at that cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. 12 hour day. No, I getting off for 12 hours. Today. Yeah. I over and above the call of duty, some would say. However, <laughs> it's been a very full, interesting day. Um, done many miles and uh, we're not far off finishing. We've 20 minutes, we'll be in, tucked up, and the kettle on. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. look forward to that somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Otto's been on the helm for the past hours. He's a grand crewman. He's just swerving round uh, fishing. Alright, you've swerved him round, have you? Well done. Yeah, he never complains, he doesn't take up a bank. He's pretty good. Well, we miss him, we miss him. You think? Yeah. Yeah. And Donald's just asked Otto to swerve around this. You would think you'd hardly ever come across that, but we've come head on with dozens of them. Uh oh, uh oh, Donald, here's Mike on deck. And what have you got to say to it, Mike? Look, sunshine. Oh. We just had a near miss with a boy, but all's well. We slammed the engine into neutral before running it down. There's another one out there. Yeah. Well, here we are approaching Leipster, which isn't marked very well on this electronic chart. It's 9.20 on Wednesday the 27th of July, the last day of our cruise. We're out of Leipster, bound for Nairn. We've got a sparkling day. And a nice breeze. Not quite on the nose, so close hold, we should make it in about one leg to Nairn. Excellent, great sailing. We're romping along four and a half, five knots. Fantastic. We'll be in tons of time for the tide, which is whee! <laughs> which is in the evening at the end of the day. And we've got Mike on the helm, so we're beating up with ease.
Tell us about the shadow, Donald. Well, <laughs> for the first time since I came on board, I saw a shadow this morning. So. And if proof be needed, yeah. there you are. There you and there you are. <laughs> What oh, I like, Mike. Aye, good. Aye, what a sailing day. Good. Yeah. And there's Leibster Forest there and already. There it is. Superb sailing day. The boys have got their cool shades on and we're away. I don't know whether you can see the Beatrice oil field windmills or not. See them fine with the naked eye, but a bit difficult to pick up with the camera. Helmsdale, heading for home. I went to bed for about an hour, and when I got back up, the crew were hoisting the spinnaker. A glorious sight. Tarbot Nessa beam, spinnaker fly, five knots, sparkling evening. This is luck. Racing home at five knots in the inner Murray Firth now. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Look at that spinnaker. <laughs> and the tea's on. Look at that. That. We're in home grounds on the inner Murray Firth. Otto's got the bum's rush, he's no longer coping because we're on the spinnaker. He's going below and the team are happy. Oh yes, glorious finish. Carbot Ness above the beam.
1920 and Cracklin Rosie has completed the circle. Here we are back at Nairn and we're drilling about waiting for the tide to rise a little further before we attempt going into the harbour and we're having a cup of tea. In the next bucket. Here we go. Still a lovely night. Oh, we'll have a biscuit or something. Eh? Or a piece. Or a piece with you or like? I think so. Oh, scones are the boys. Let's have them. Excellent. Scones, cream, and jam. Scones, jam, and cream. <laughs> and cream. <laughs> Butter, butter, butter. Uh, 